All right, uh, my name is Vince. Second time here on uh, the Pinoy crossover. Great time here always with these guys. <laughs> uh, so I've been pretty much playing basketball my whole life. So as they say, ball is life. You know, so <laughs> mm -hmm. Gotta keep it going. Yeah, I'm Jamil. Uh, it's nice to be on the show. Uh, heard, I've seen your YouTube clip, so it's a pretty awesome show. Um, coming right back from a podcast, actually, I'm in the podcast game, so it's good to be on TV. Shout out to uh, Jeremiah and the Inside the Lines and Nick Ooh. on the weekly show. Ooh. And uh, no plug. You know, no been plug. A, been a, I'm known as a sports, kind of like the sports guy, like baseball, kind of but basketball's obviously top of the food chain, but uh, happy to be on the show. Hey, Thank you for joining <laughs> us, man. Can't wait to hear all the tidbits and all the, you know, Opinions. So let's talk about like we just came back from my boy. I don't know if you guys know about my boy Cup. Yes. But we just broadcasted last weekend. Oh. Man, did you did you guys enjoy it? Like I was. That was fun. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I mean, besides like the heat wave kind of in there because <laughs> so many people. It was fun. Yeah, it was like, hard. It, it's, man, we never had that when we were when we were kids. Like yeah. we, we were playing with yeah. boy Cup from like long ago, and uh, back then it was like Norbert and like. Even Norbert was around, but we never had broadcasts like that. So. Yeah. <coughs> Thank you. Thank hey, you. man, that's what you're trying to do. We're trying yeah, to bring it to the, the game. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, new the first ever tournament that I played, like, with PJ, that yeah. was, like, not from our high school, was, I, th I think it was with Boy Cup, as far as I remember. Yeah, 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 that's where. Because it was Hoop Dome. And like I took the, like some a shot during like uh, and like one overtime because you fouled out <laughs> and your dad was mad at me that I took the shot or something because okay. I missed. No, my boy comes yeah. serious. That's how you know it's you're deep in the summer. Yeah, yeah it's prime time Filipino basketball season. So. I think my boy was one of the first uh, Filipino tournaments I played. I this guy me and this guy played for uh, Scarborough Falcons. So oh, not on the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Shout out to Scarborough uh, Falcons. Yeah. Shout out to Falcons. Yeah. But not on the same squad. But I do remember as a kid that those are the days hoop dome and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. Hoop Dome's become like the, the premier <laughs> venue where people like for basketball, like yeah. Filipino tournaments. Yeah. One thing I noticed a lot of uh, when we were broadcasting, we broadcasted like a mosquito division, a very small division. Mm. Let's talk about like the development now these days with players. Have you have you guys seen anything different? Or for me, I see like kids that are like way more they're way taller, more, way more yeah, athletic. Yeah. What are they're you way thinking? they were, they're way more skilled nowadays because mm. they just we there's just way more access to basketball camps and mm. the the stuff you watch on TV it's all about skill it's all about can you shoot the three can you mm. you know can you dribble like Kyrie yeah, can you dribble like Kyrie mm. back then could like, you dribble like Kyrie no <laughs> exactly. well, there was like, there was this kid the, the championship the championship uh C cat a C cat one of the kids like uh, I think his name, I don't remember, he's number 21. Because yeah. we were broadcasting. I was he the one the, that keeps the calling ponytail, him. Right? Ponytail, right? The ponytail? He was pretty good. A, like, he had the best like handles out of anyone. No one can dribble like him. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And he had this floater that just like, he just floats. And, and like, every time he passed by you, he just does the floater. And he was like, I don't think I've ever seen anyone does like that around our age or around their age. And he's pretty oh, small. Small compared to like small. Any, any the other teams. So. Mm. And he goes to show like, now a lot of kids are like more fundamentally central. I don't think mm. we, I'm, you know, during our time when we were playing as little kids, no. we had that kind of access to like, you know, camps or get us, you know, right. to play uh, basic fundamental basketball. And now they are having access. Because when I started playing, I just played because yeah, it was yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. I yeah. was never really like, oh, go to camp and learn the basic fundamental basketball. You touched upon a good point about like shooting threes, but yeah. do you feel like the style of game, because of everything being available, do you think there's more um, like an, Toward that game of shooting threes, yeah. has it been different back in the day when we were playing? Well, like I pretty much had a lot of the kids, like the, their media outlet to like, you know, Steph Curry, mm -hmm. all those shooters, everyone wants to be like Steph Curry, you know? Like back in the day, it's more of like the drive game, kind of mid-range game, but like everyone wants to go for the three, right? That's like true. people see videos of like LaMelo pulling up from like half court. So it doesn't shock me like, kids nowadays, you know, going mm -hmm. for that. And then there's that one kid that we broadcasted for the Bantam division, Tyler yeah. from Bayern, that plays like that. He dropped, he dropped 40 plus points with threes. 44 points in a championship game. It was crazy. Pull up yeah. from half court. And yes. I heard about that. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny actually, because I recently like uh, wrote an article for our, our uh, blog and I talked about, I mentioned, I touched upon that. I, I call it kind of like, um, there's always a player in the NBA, what I call a transcending player, mm -hmm. which is the kind of player that transcends the way the league is mm -hmm. right now. Because it started with um, when Magic Johnson started playing, he was kind of a transcending yeah. player. He was a big, you know, six nine guard yeah. that plays the point guard position. And you see <coughs> a lot of players nowadays that you know you see a LeBron, which is kind of like how Magic played, a big guard that can handle, that can pass. And you see now a lot of players like Ben Simmons and. Um, What's his name? Lonzo Ball that plays, you know, Lonzo Ball is 6'6", people don't know. 
Mm. The, these guys are big guards that can do that. And I think Steph Curry is one of those kind of transcending players yeah. that just transition. Especially for the little kids. Little yeah. kids, they are watching. So I think Steph Curry is those kind of player that trans, like, transcends all other players nowadays or how they play. Because I've, you've seen it too with Shaq. Shaq was mobile, but he came from watching Hakeem Olajuwon. Mm. And now you're seeing guys that, can, that have guarding that are you know guard skills, but they're big. You're seeing DeMarcus Cousin, you're seeing Carl Anthony Towns, Porzingis, mm -hmm. came through watching like uh, uh, Dirk. So yeah. it's those kind of players you see, and these kids are watching Steph Curry. That's what we're seeing nowadays, which is Tyler, yeah. for example. And back in my day, or pretty much our days, we I was watching Vince Carter, Vince Car Matt, Kobe. So yeah. I was used to the drive game. I wasn't really, I didn't really develop a three-point shot because mm -hmm. I felt like it was more appealing to have a drive game because we yeah. were watching Vince Carter. So yeah. those guys were your transcendent players back yeah. in the day. So Just the Kobe's sense. and the Iverson that we watched, yeah, right? Exactly. The mid range, the fadeaway. That was our. Yeah. That was what we Just watched. Just to quickly touch up on your point yeah. on the mosquitoes and the young kids. Like nothing really surprised me how well these kids at a young age are doing so well. Like I coach soccer for a really young age, like two to three year old, three year olds, and they just blow me away in terms of like how they know these fundamentals, like just like that. Mm -hmm. So nothing really surprises me at this point, you know? And it's good to see. Good to Even see. though this is a basketball show, I know we were talking off camera, we said something about we wish we were playing a different sport. You coached soccer, you said. Mm -hmm. Was, is there, do you, do you feel that, well I see that a lot of good athletes are actually good at other sports. Is there any other sports that you think would complement playing basketball or that you wish mm. you would have played oh, before was, when you were a kid? Yeah, 100% yeah. soccer. Mm -hmm. Develop your footwork mm -hmm. right away. Yeah. Uh, that translates well into basketball. You won't be traveling a lot. You won't be. Yeah. <laughs> your, your post game probably yeah. will be good. So. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I feel like football too would be great. Like if, mm. you know, just build strength. A lot of football players like Iverson, uh, was LeBron, LeBron. Nate Robinson, yeah. they were uh, good Green, football, yeah. football players before like they went into, like, you know, and they played basketball. Yeah.